yeah interesting it was hard to get the boat under control in the sense that um, it just feels it's so much overpowered with the amount of sail that I have it's like a, a four is like I already have two reefs in the front and one in the in the main and still I'm going seven knots with apparent 12 now five over ground five and a half so maybe it's just me but uh, it feels like the boat has yeah it's just serious power i keep forgetting how important it is to have uh, peace and quiet in the boat and uh, i also keep forgetting how helpful the steering machine is because that saves a lot of work it saves a lot of work when setting sail which is a nightmare when with, like with four it just doesn't work you know yeah yeah like constantly going back and forth it's just very inconvenient so or i need to be able to do it from the cockpit or i need a steering machine that helps me uh, steer but uh this isn't really working so uh, it works but it's not really comfortable so besides that uh, with the steering machine it's peace and quiet in the boat it were, it's just a, such an amazing thing I'm double reefed on the main now I have my full genuine out and the boat is well, not fully balanced actually I still have to push it to uh, uh, Afala so to say because it just keep, keeps loofing up, which is uh, quite amazing, uh, actually. But uh, yeah, doing seven through water, five and a half over ground, so uh, I think it's comfortable. And the machine works! interesting huh? so look at the sail you would say it's not good but it's still it's still helming oh, oh. so basically it is too uh, lufgierig that's, that's actually quite interesting because if you look at my sail I would say it's horrible so yes Jan what could it be a killing mainsail and still too much power in it hmm. could it be something with the underleg stacker Possibly. What I haven't told you is that in Maidenblick I ran into Bart again, the guy that I met previous episode, and this time I invited him over uh, and he came and brought me the Zeile Trimgids. Now, coincidentally, he obviously didn't see this episode yet because it's just released. So, Bart, I think this is a good one. Thank you very much, man. Welcome back to another episode of Sailing Windrose. We are here in Windrose and we are about to show you the remainder of our sail from the Round Around North Holland. And the good news was that I was on more confined water, no current, no depth, but there was quite a bit of wind and I was having quite a bit of fun. It is so nice when it all comes together, man. Look at the water. Sunshine, a breeze of wind. I think we're doing 15 knots. The 
boat auto helms. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Woo yeah! This is why we do it. This is woohoo! It's a bit of a shame I can't use the Jack Sparrow song because it fits quite well indeed! Quite good is quite a bit of an understatement. I actually felt thrilled. I thought it was really, really, really good to be finally in control of the boat on my own, managing a four, gusting a little bit, uh, but having the boat in control uh, felt amazing. And um, knowing that I can do that really strengthened my uh, my confidence in my own capabilities and ability to be able to sail solo. So after a bit of a fight and a lot of joy and energy being wasted in happiness, I approached Enkhuizen. Enkhuizen is straight ahead. So if the wind stays as it is, I should be good to go. And as always, I'm the slowest boat in the fleet. <laughs> But then again, it's because I'm sailing with two reefs in on a well, what appears to be three to four before, so I think that is part of the reason. But uh, well, for me, there's plenty of wind, I think it's comfortable. We're doing uh, four knots now, and that's we say, a bit at knijpen. I actually see that in the rudder, so I'm gonna adjust it a little bit, give it a bit more room to breathe uh, that cricks up the speed quite nice and now I'm not making it obviously obviously I'll see if I can put the, the Genoa on a bit more let's see the Genoa is on oh it should be on even more oh, that's gonna be difficult but uh, let's see how this evolves at least I'm at the right course now Yeah. Wow. It's a two mile sail. That's huh? if I would be at sea and I would be sailing to Curacao or Suriname from uh, the Grenadines, then uh, I might change it. But for now, for the two miles, uh, I'll believe it. Really versatile, especially if there's no wind. <laughs> I'm happy I did it on my own. Kind of works. I'm actually quite tired from all the sailing adventures. That's the uh, that's one of the differences I think with sailing overnight. Yeah, that is tiring, but having all the locks, having all the ships, having everything is also tiring. You have another guy there. Anyway, we have land ahead. I spotted it through the binoculars, which is uh, a comforting feeling. Like, well, at least they didn't erase it, or it didn't get washed away. So, uh, all in all, that's good. It's a nine, ten, yeah, ten, yeah. Ten apparent, five through water. I think this is gonna be an hour of relaxing. I'm not gonna do a whole lot more than exactly that.
relaxing, yes, but if you are overtaking by the neighbor who has two children on the bow, well, then you sometimes think of your son who actually has good tips. So I brought in the secret weapon. Yes, baby. This one is for you, Steph. Because daddy, if you're not gonna do it now, you're never gonna do it. Here it is, baby. <laughs> Woohoo! gel. I love this. This is not why I bought it. But it does work like a charm, man. Okay, there's always something to improve. Well, at least this works. <laughs> Woohoo! This is fast. <laughs> this is really fast. Look at it. You have to panic cook. I bought a light weather sailing boat. Ha! That's what it is. We're having 7.3 beam reach wind. And we're doing five over ground and seven through water. Seven through water with with eight knots of wind apparent. Wow. If you recognize yourself, don't hesitate to leave me a like. <laughs> oh, I love sailing with you, man. Thank you for getting a bit of speed out of this boat. <laughs> Oh, I was going to look at the, at the AIS, if I can actually spot him. Yes, there he is. It is Batauwe. Sailing vessel Batauwe. Ah, good. We have made it. We are at anchor once again. A lovely Markawadde. And it is blowing eight knots and I'm at the lower end of the market here, but tonight the wind is going to turn to the northerly direction so I'm going to be quite well protected if I'm correct <laughs> we'll see I am tired so what the first thing I'm going to do is take a swim My captain! Ah, oh, that was a captain too, sir. I know that you already know that I am a lucky guy, but I felt quite good. A bit tired, but still quite good. And to finish the day, I deserved, I thought, a nice meal. So I made it. I have my Yopa Biotje 0.0, .0 IPA, and I have a sort of minestrone soup with some fresh baked bread, courgette, uh, pie, peas, uh, potatoes, well, a lot. So thank you Sasha for making this great uh, menu, picking it for me and now I'm going to have a snack because I'm quite hungry indeed at 8 o'clock. Huh. I normally always sit in, as we say, the Kuip, in the cockpit. But I thought why don't I go and sit in the front of the boat actually. <laughs> That's a good idea. Check this view. I call food with a view. <laughs> Hi, 
Bye bye, Marke Wallen. Auf Wiedersehen. Thank you for a lovely time. A bit rocky. I liked it. We have blue skies ahead. Let's raise some sails. We're sailing again to 30 degrees. A course known by me. It's heading home. It's a Piet Veerman sailing home. Sailing home across the Markermeer. How does it feel, Jan, after two weeks on your own on a ship? Yesterday I had a super day, today I'm a bit... I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm doubting a lot. But I think I should not draw conclusions before uh, I actually uh, processed it. Because... It's so fucked. I like this. And I know, you know, it's, it's light weather. I, I, I think I just like light weather sailing because I lack the confidence in heavy weather sailing. I know the boat can handle it, but um, yeah, it's just a little bit uncomfortable sometimes. But I'm happy to go home, happy to see my son, who I haven't seen for almost uh, three weeks now, which is a long time. And my wife, which I have almost, you know, I saw her last weekend, but before that I missed her for two weeks. Uh, and I'll be on a business trip next week. So yeah, it's uh, going home and having some quality time with the family, which I think is also super important in your holidays. And contemplate about this, pet the dog, see the wife, see the son. Yeah, I loved it, but I'm also happy to go home. Ah, I yet again raised the new sail and it looks pretty dang spiffy actually. I know it's not blowing 7x4 and I didn't intend to use it for this but it actually does really create an additional layer that guides the wind quite well and my main sail is killing a bit and this one is also not ideal so I need to trim it a bit I guess but in essence it works as an additional power source and it saves about 0.5 knots so let's trim the boat a bit more and see if I can get more out of this yeah. I would say every little gust you do feel in the sails and I'm not the only one going slow the guy over there is actually going even slower so normally i'm captain slow but today not we're making progress a lot of birds by the way and a lot of sailboats as always so in the netherlands so i re-trimmed all the sails and in this case i let go of the neerhouder uh, i also eased the underlike tracker a bit so it's killing just a bit when it's bubbling, but besides that all looks good. This looks good, except for the top one, but... And the interesting part is... It's auto-helming. I just locked the steering wheel and I don't have to do anything. So I learned in the Spanker and in the Altmeer that then you have your sails trimmed correctly. And the boat just auto steers. It auto steers on this course. It's an Anderwindse course. It's tacking, and it it just steers itself. It has a a, a, a dash of a dagger board in. Not too much. It's quite amazing. I can just see it go straight here. Wind picking up now again. It's quite it's variable winds that I know. So it, we're 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 between seven and nine, ten ish. Now I see it's going up. So apparently the wind's going to shift to the west, but that's taking a bit. Now it is actually picking up, and that's why I took away the uh, cotter fog because it's a manual one. It takes quite a bit of work. In, uh, on my own, on, when I would be with two, it would no, not be a problem. But in my, on my own, it's a bit of a task. So all good here, and just cruising along. I now actually need to follow a little bit. Almost home. 
How's it feel, Jan? It has been a good two weeks. That's how it feels. And I'm not sure what happens. But I don't feel I can quit now. So let's just continue. Shall we? Now that is what I call a very sane thing to do. Because right after such a trip, you just don't know. You need to process it, you need to live it, you need to feel it, you need to be there. And I'm here. I'm still here. I didn't sell the boat. Which is good news. Because it means I'm going to go sailing for an extended period of time. And it's going to be next year. And it is up to you to guess where I'm going. So, leave a comment below with how long and where to. And if it's anywhere near three months and... Uh, then you're quite right. So, love to see it. Hit a like. Hit subscribe if you haven't done so. And leave a comment with your feelings. Love to see it. Love to read it. Love to see you with the next episode of Sailing Wind Rose. Bye, boys and girls.